This is Big City Drinks. I'm Ace. This is Alex. Yo. And today, Alex, uh, we want to have a store haul. Yep. Quick store haul. Uh, we've been yep. away for a while, yeah. so we both kind of went on vacation, so we haven't really been able to hunt as much. November's normally bourbon hunting. Uh, all the B tags are out, stags, um, a lot of, like toast, toasted barrels, like everything that's coming up. Uh, we haven't really gotten to it because we were just uh, kind of away. You took a trip, I took a trip. But uh, we did pick up some stuff along in this month of October. So um, we'll show you some stuff. Which ones do we have first? Uh, first one we have is a Jim Beam Bonded. I picked this one up. Um, I don't know. I tasted the regular Jim Beam. And it's it's pretty good. I, I like it, you know. And uh, this bottle and bond. Obviously, when it's bottom and bond, it's uh, age what? Uh, it's a minimum age four, four years. years. So like, it depends on how much. Uh, like it's the good thing about it being bottled and bond is it's legally like the federal government makes sure that it's aged the way that it's aged. Uh, it was something that came uh, about um, because of like counterfeit whiskey back in the early days. So they decided to do bottle and bond. This means that it has a specific age proof of minimum of four years. And sometimes the different bottles have different age periods and stuff like that. But minimum is going to be four. Uh, it also gives it a nice uh, proof. It's pot, it's, bottom and bond normally gives you like at least a good 100 proof. And this one's 100, right? Yeah, this one's 100. So it's not that bad. It's a little stronger than the regular. But we'll definitely crack it open and see eventually how it's going to be. This one I can't wait. Yeah. All right, what do we have next? Uh, the next one we picked up is uh, something from our... Uh, tours smooth series that we were doing. Uh, we did the the tequila, the tequila one, mezcal. The mezcal. Yeah, we did the mezcal smooth. Uh, this is the Caribbean smooth, and I think we also have a Japanese smooth coming up. Yeah, we so. have that in in our shelf here. Um, it's so far so good. We like the mezcal. Remember that one? Yeah, the it mezcal was, was amazing. It was really fantastic. good. So this one will also I hear good things. A lot of spice on this one. Um, we are missing, I think, one more from this series. I think it's the Portugal. Yep. One might be missing. I think it's the Portugal. We're gonna see where we can, we can find this one. The Doors yeah, Portugal smooth. It's hmm. a once a year thing, so I believe this is this year's. This might be this year's, I think, or. Yeah, this either this one or the Japanese is this year's, but um, I think the first one is the one that we're missing. But either way, it's it's something that we've already liked before, like on a previous thing. So it's gonna be fun to see how this one is. All right, what's next? The next thing we have is the Heaven Hell, and now this one also bottled in bond. Ah, but unlike the other one, this one's bottled in bond, but this one is seven years old. So it's telling you it's a seven year old uh, bottled in bond. I uh, believe it should be about 100 as well. So after the four years, they still continue to to do prime, like, you know, continue to work on this? Yeah, after four years, it's, uh, as long as it still meets those regular, the federal regular mandates that they do for bottled and bond, you can eat bottled and bond it for however long you want. But um, that's what makes it, you know, that, that makes it original is the bottled and bond. It's, it's part of the federal government, so it's, it's nice to at least have an age statement. That means they don't give you anything young. It has some age to it. What is the percentage on this? this is it also 100? Oh, uh, this one should be a little bit about, yeah, about 100 exactly. So, And Heaven Hill. We haven't had this. Uh, we haven't had the Heaven Hill per se, but I know we have had some stuff. We bought some stuff from uh, the same company as Heaven Hill. So, but this is like the first Heaven Hill direct product that we have. So it's going to be fun to have. And all of these, uh, these three things that we have, we got them at uh, Angela's Liquor in, uh, was it three, 2532 in Broadway in uh, Long Island City. Yeah. So I always try to look for different locations where we could, you know, find them cheaper, find them where there's not available sometimes in some areas. This place, I stop by once in a while and always great customer service there. Um, they have a good variety too. Not yeah. just bourbon, just everything. everything. I always think it's good to shop local and support yeah. local businesses, especially in the times that we're doing now. So I think, you know, sometimes it's fun. Like everybody usually goes to the big Total, uh, total Wine, Liquors and different things like that. Like the big uh, mega... Um, 
distributors, but uh, sometimes, you know, you'll build relationships with somebody at the liquor store, and, and hey, you never know. Sometimes it'll pay out, sometimes it won't, but, you know, it's always good to support local businesses. Oh, yeah. We have something else from an, a different store as well. Oh, uh, uh, yeah. This one actually came, uh, this one's a recommendation. It's called uh, Millum and Green. This one came from us from uh, Gramercy Wine and Spirits down in uh, in Manhattan. Yeah. So it's on 104 East 23rd Street. Um, this one we actually was kind of interesting because this one we got as a recommendation from the person that recommended the Mr. Whiskey that we reviewed earlier. And you saw that we kind of really enjoyed that. So um, talking to the person who suggested it to us, now they're suggesting something else. Um, it'll be interesting to see if their suggestions are... What their suggestions are and we might like it we might not it really depends but it's fun to build a relationship and gives you something to try that's different uh i'm trying to see what the alcohol this is 94 proof so it's a low it's a nice low uh yeah. middle, of, middle of the road the interesting thing i think this one is triple cast so it's going to be a little bit it's going to have a little different uh taste to it well i think with uh did i miss something i was made in texas no about my mom on that one? I think, uh, if I remember correctly, this one actually might be... Yeah, I think it's from Tennessee and... It's either Tennessee or Indiana that uh, they got the uh, the mash bill and they uh, put it together. Like, so they aged it in Texas. But, uh, like, the liquid comes from a, common, a blend of Texas and... Tennessee or Texas and Indiana. Great. I can't wait to have this one. If the Mr. Whiskey was that good, and don't forget to watch the video too in our previous ones. The Mr. Whiskey review was fantastic. Yeah, so we'll definitely see how this is, and uh, if anything, we'll probably check that out and see how, how well it'll work. Okay, and now uh, this one was uh, also I found because of the price, I bought it immediately. Now, there's a lot of stuff behind this. this. This is the small batch from the Colonel. Now, if you're able to find a single barrel, if you're able to find the, uh, what's it, straight rye. Straight rye. You if you find it for a price reasonable, I strongly recommend to get it. This one was a little under $100. I think it was like $70, $80. Yeah, so. you usually go from 60 to 70 here in the city. Yeah. Um, it's, it's like, yeah, around, well, actually, yeah, 69 and up. But because it, it's scarce to find, like the Colonel is one of those Buffalo Trace products that you're either going to find really expensive or you're not going to find any at all. Um, other states, you get lucky. And I've seen other people in other states just post pictures of this. Getting, this is a regular thing for them and they pay regular price for them and things like that. So anything that's like really hard and allocated is always going to be more expensive and Right now, in the bourbon in the bourbon world that we live in, anything Buffalo Trace is over expensive and impossible to find. Have you seen the warehouse C of this? Yeah, actually, the warehouse really? C is interesting. I've seen a couple of uh, pictures about it. Um, it's funny because it's that that one I think was like it survived a tornado or something. Whatever it was, it was like a specific weird thing that it did. That it survived, and then they're like, "Yeah, you know, we'll just sell it as as warehouse C." And that's you know has a little story to it. Yeah. But again, it you know the price on it. <laughs> it's I haven't even looked at the price. I, I it's it's almost impossible to look at a price or something like that. Another one that's hard, I believe, is the eighteen year old marriage. Oh, uh, the eighteen year marriage, I believe, comes from the same. It's almost like a. Like the same as uh, Buffalo Trace Antique Collection, mm. so you're not gonna find it anywhere. It's the most it's the most expensive ones. So you have like 18 year marriage, and you have the uh, George T. Stag things like that you, oh, yeah. that are like high end on the Buffalo Trace list. Uh, almost impossible to find. You know, you you, you get a, a small batch here and there. You're lucky for a single. The, the reason why I think these kernels keep going up in prices is because I know they're hard to get. They are. But 
I think other companies push it too. And you just mentioned one, George C. Stagg. Do you, can you tell me what happened to George C. Stagg this year? Uh, yeah, actually the Buffalo Trace Antique Collection, this is the, might be the first year that they uh, canceled the George C. Stagg release. Apparently they tasted it a couple of times and they didn't like what they had. And according to Buffalo Trace, they have a specific, um, like they have, you know, they have a specific taste that they enjoy, they, that that's supposed to be. So, you know, they yeah. don't want to make a subpar, what they call a subpar bourbon for what a George T. Stagg or what their catalog, catalog of George T. Stagg is. So they're like, we're not going to put anything out because we don't like what it takes. So. It didn't pass their expectations. Yeah, so it was uh, below expectations and they were like, nope, we're going to cut it short. And I think because of that, then... Uh, people start looking elsewhere, and this is one of them. Yeah. I, I would think. I don't think so. I'll probably like the, the running joke about that is they're probably gonna have like some uh, Colonel Colonel E. H. Taylor, like some mystery lost at sea or some random thing, and it's gonna oh, be that boy. it's gonna be that George T. Stagg, oh, no, and no, it's no. gonna rebottle it somewhere. They're gonna. Oh, ri- like ridiculously price price the tags everywhere. Hard pass. Is uh, like I said, and this was a hundred, right? Bottle and bond as well. The, this yeah, this one's bottle and bond. That runs same thing. They they'll tell you. I, I think on the thing it tells you how long the blend is. So it could be from different things, but at minimum the minimum a year that they blend is four years. Yeah. So it's a small batch. It'll blend whatever it is. So, sometimes it's straight. Depends. Um, I guess. The Colonel, they make tons of names for it. There's Warehouse See, I believe there's the Corrine of the Gods or something like that. There's, there's I haven't just, seen that one. There's just a bunch. It's, it's I love fun. the names. I'm going to tell you right it's now. Fun, I love those but, names. It's fun, but it's close to impossible to find. So when you get something, it's, it's a good try. If you've never had it before, give it a try and just go from there. All right. And then our last one, I picked up on uh, my small little vacation I took uh, to Pennsylvania in uh, Arlington, I believe I, I went to, and uh, this place was great because they they, they have that uh, lottery system that uh, they mostly have in the south, but this is Pennsylvania, so this is as close as we could get. And they had different kinds of bourbons that, that are allocated and stuff like that, and I picked this one up. Yeah, Pennsylvania is a state-controlled, uh, mm. state-controlled uh, liquor, so... Uh, everything is run by the state. Everything is usually sold at MSRP. So you kind of get like some good stuff. But it's also a lottery system for like the really allocated stuff. Like the kernels and things like that. At Buffalo Entries, the Pappies. All of those things will come through uh, some sort of lottery system for you to get something. But everything else is priced relatively low. Um, this one, from what it seems, is a... It's... Bottled in Pennsylvania. It's for aged and bottled in Pennsylvania. But if I remember correctly, this one is MGP. So it's like Indiana Green, stuff like that. Hmm. Um, I like the proof. It's 104. So we'll see how... how... An odd 104. But I, I can't wait. We're gonna, we're definitely going to do a review on this one. Yeah. Um, I one. hear good things. Even the the manager at the store I bought it, he's like, hey, we strongly recommend it. And it's from Pennsylvania. So we keep it. In the family, he said. Yeah. I was like, okay, no problem. It's gonna be interesting to have something like this, especially because it's a local thing. Like, yeah. um, this one's like under uh, around forty-five dollars for this one, so uh, I, I expect good things from it. I always think it's good because it's a, like you're, you know, supporting your local um, yeah. liquor store, liquor distilleries, and stuff like that. Like we have here in New York, we have a couple of. Um, liquor stores, uh, li- distilleries that we um, like to support. Like, I like Taconic. Uh, and there's a couple of things here and there. But um, it's always good to have something um, from your state. So, All right. So this was our store hall here. Um, uh, this is Ace. This is Alex. Yep. And uh, thank you very much, guys. We'll see you soon. Bye.